Listen, I'm a Knicks fan, right? Since your father played, okay? Let's since be he was on the team. Since he was on the team. <laughs> yeah, now your play, father yeah. played. That's my he was man. There. That's my man, too. All right, but I mean, he played, man. And <laughs> yeah, so don't be trying to boy. do your yeah, new funny, seeds. man. This guy's crazy, man. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Roommates, where the vibes are always immaculate. This is a Playmaker original. Uh, today, we got our guest from the Bronx. Um, he's a rapper, actor, executive, chart topper, um, legendary Knicks fan, Fat Joe. We appreciate you pulling up to the pod, my yeah, guy. That guy called me a legendary coach, too. I'm legendary. Legendary. Oh, yeah. Call me Bobby Knight on the street. Bobby Knight on the street. I hope you didn't you didn't throw a chair or nothing like that. I <laughs> might have did a whole bunch. <laughs> What's your coaching style? It's legend. See, I see the floor like a point guard. You know what I'm saying? So my whole thing is like this. I can see it all. And then I, I just make moves as we go. And then I see what's working, what's not working. Implement the And I'm very, di I'm like a disrespectful coach. Like I'm the best coach to, <laughs> to be with. Right, because I'm with you, with you, yeah. with you. But if if I keep telling you to do something, you want to listen. Because the biggest thing about all athletes is you can you can have the most talent in the world, but if your IQ ain't right, they they'll make the same mistake over and over mm -hmm. again. So I will embarrass them in front of the whole parks, <laughs> time out and stand where I've been telling them to stand and be like, here. If you stand here, they won't score again. <laughs> this is why I'm like 99 and 1. You know what I'm saying? Out there in the rock. You, you need me to tell Tibbs to put you on the coaching no, staff? Tibbs man? is enough for y'all, bro. Tib, <laughs> Tib, Tibbs, Tibbs. <laughs> you got your work. You know he's the coolest guy in the world, too. Yeah, that's, Off the that's scene, my he's guy. the coolest guy in the world. But his high blood pressure must be something on that court. <laughs> uh, he is angry. My daughter be like, he's angry, dad. No, he's not angry. He's not, he just. He looks angry. Uh, he well, he looks fights angry. for you. Uh, he fights for nah, sure. He fights for everybody. Uh, yeah, he fights yeah. for everybody. But no, nah, he's a. Uh, he's not really mean, dude. He, he mean well. No, I like him. Yeah. Like behind the scenes, I've hung out yeah, yeah. With, with, with Tibbs. Super cool. He's you know? he, he's very he's very passionate and hands on. I'll say that. You need that, but you know the man know the game. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. You gotta respect when somebody know the game. Sometimes you look at some some coaches and you be like, ah, they just barking the bark, but they don't really know the game. Tibbs know the game. They the problem with him is he needs every element to work, you know? And so like the way he knows how to coach, everything gotta be clicking. Like you guys are clicking, clicking, clicking. You was a major, major piece to bring confidence to the Knicks, to have us clicking gelling together, believe it or not. And so the, from day one, because you guys all played together in college, y'all start. you really like brought this gel to it to be like, all right, now we going. Right. What, we got a well-oiled machine here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody playing their part. But Tibbs is like, and, and, and he only knows how to coach one way. He's old fashioned. So he's just <laughs> going, he says, yo, this is what how we win. This is how we Buy win, in. yep. Figure it out. Do you want to win? Do you want to play? Right. Do you want to yeah. This is what it is. Yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. I, um, let's go back to your coaching career. Yeah. To the game that never happened. Yeah. The Rucker Park game. It was Blackout. Team Joe. Yeah. Team J. Yeah, team team, team Carter. Yeah. yeah. Talk um, about it. It was, uh, you know, it's like... You know, we wanted Caitlin to play Juju. That's 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 what we really wanted. Right. And that's what uh, the algorithms were saying. So it, it was really weird that Juju and them lost because I could have bet my whole life that they were going to play each other, right? And so that's what happened here. You know, I had been at the Rucker, you know, for a couple of years. The, 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 the park had 
fell off a little. And so once I came in there and I brought a team in, I started bringing all the NBA. You know, Steph Marbury played every single game for us for the seven years I coached. He played every single game, never missed Dang. a game. And his brother Zach. And then so I, I was bringing AI in there. I was bringing, you know, everybody you could think of who was just turning it up. The only guy who never came who's my brother is D-Wade. D-Wade was the one guy I chased for seven years straight <laughs> who never touched the rock. <laughs> And uh, and so that was around the time Kobe came out there, and uh, rest in peace, Kobe. And so you know, we 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 was, when I once I saw he had a team, I said, oh no, we playing the chip. The, the, before I even seen him play, and, and I, I was I was mad because I had brought the the park back to like you know the audience, the attendance, mm -hmm. everything. And they just strolled in, and you know this man I've been dealing with him in hip hop my whole life, mm -hmm. and the guy, he just wins at everything. He got the baddest chick in the game, wearing his chain. He's the <laughs> richest guy, he's the diss. I said, no, this guy tried really, nah. So I, I you know, my he stole one of my main players, uh, John Strick, may he rest in peace. So when he says in the record, my, my homie Strick told me, dude, finish mm -hmm. your breakfast. That hurt, uh, oh, that sure. hurt bad, because he took like, we used to call him the baby panda. Probably one of the most skilled big men I ever seen play street basketball. He should have been in the NBA. So he had that uh, Flotty Divac. He had like the Joker. He was like the Joker. You know, he would pass, score, but he took him. And so every game I remember walking, uh, walking out the park if we won, and all of a sudden you hear the whole crowd go, <sighs> and then I'm walking past and. It's Beyonce walking in. Nah, it was out of control what was going on out there. They had dancers. They had a real tour bus. Oh, they bus. were doing the whole thing. Oh, no, they was pulling up in the tour bus, the Jay-Z <laughs> tour bus, with everybody coming out. And every day they had LeBron. There's LeBron straight out of high school. They had LeBron, Sebastian Telfair. Uh, Jamal Crawford was, was going crazy for them. I think Antoine Walker, a couple of them. But uh, the night of the chip, uh, 30,000 people outside of a park that should only fit 500. Okay. And, uh, so, no, there was lines for hours and hours down the blocks, down the blocks. The garden's 19,000. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it was more than the garden. It was, it was, sure. uh, but, you know, they were climbing the tree. They would get on the bridge. <laughs> they get on the rooftop. Mm -hmm. Everybody got to see it. Yeah. You got to understand, this is what I tell people all the time. This is how you used to recruit players to play, right? Because... You're super rich. Why would you want to play in the street park and maybe hurt yourself or something? But mm -hmm. I'd be like, yo, the kids that really emulate you, you got to understand, when you're playing on Christmas, there's a kid that goes to the park right after you play yep, and emulates your moves on snow, <laughs> on the ice, yeah. mm -hmm. trying to get nice. And so out there in the hood, they ain't got a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000 to go to the garden. They just don't have it. So I would sell it to the players, like, yo, come back to the hood, man. The kids really love you. They hit, and they would come. And so that day, we went, we went out there, and it was a blackout. It, it, it was crazy. So we out there, Jay-Z and them is out there. So it's a blackout. So there's no way to play the game. And so they, they go up on the radio. The only thing was working the radio, and they start talking crazy. Shaquille O'Neal gets on the radio talking crazy. I'm like, for real, Shaq? Like... They just was like overhyped, and um, and so they get they got me really angry at that point, and I was like really mad. So they scheduled the game again, and so we show up. So all my plays, it was around the time where you, you had to check into to the NBA. It was, it was, it was training, like you, mm -hmm. it was like all the teams was calling their players back. It was the end of the summer. My yeah. guys stood. All my guys stood. They was like. You know, because you got to understand, you might, you know, it's the almighty rock. Right. But then you got some guys that don't want the rock to win, too. Mm -hmm. I had all those guys, right? Yeah. So whether it was Zach Randolph, uh, Steph Marbury, Jay-Z, I just dissed him and said, yo, don't ask me like Marbury at the light. You could lose your life. So, boy, he was ready to go. And then Sebastian Telfair, we used to buy the guy ghetto Chinese. That's Steph's little cousin. We used to go to Coney Island and buy him ghetto Chinese and hang out with him, and he can't play for Jay-Z. So it was, like, really crazy. 
Uh, we I had Carmelo. Am I tripping for not knowing what ghetto Chinese is? Am I tripping? You don't know what ghetto Chinese is? Yeah, you don't know. Don't four do that. chicken wings. Like, don't do like you know either. Yo, four chicken wings, french fries, yeah, extra hot sauce, This is, this is some Chinese ketchup. spot, bro. They got everything. It's a staple in New York. If you ever had ghetto I mean, Chinese. It's like, carry, it's like carry out. You know how Chinese carry out? We call Chinese. it carry out. I'm sheltered, dog. Sorry. Yo, bro, get on chat. You don't know what you meant. Yo, listen. Full pe- mambo sauce, and they no, had mambo no, sauce. We, you will lose your Merlin mind. Had Do me mambo a favor. Sauce. Go to Harlem anytime and just go in any Chinese. I was growing up Get eating four sushi, 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 like it. <laughs> you eat what? I was growing up eating Man, sushi, eat, sashimi, all yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't eat it. sushi till I was a grown. I eat it a lot now. But um, <laughs> so we had the team. What, what people didn't know was at the same time, uh, the USA was playing the Olympics. Remember, it was in New York. That was the time Carlos Arroyo in Puerto Rico had won. So I had Mike Bibby and Allen Iverson waiting in the hotel on 57th to come up to the game after the first quarter. So we was... Uh, what year was this? Like 04? I don't know. I'm sure they could find it out. But... Yeah, uh, anyway. but 03. 03. And so we showed up. And they didn't show up on a makeup game. And I think rumors are that, you know, the, their players had to go back to Chicago, had to go everywhere. So we was on the, on the uh, court for like three hours. And then finally, uh, rest in peace, Greg Marius, he said, you know, if you walk out of here, you win by forfeit. I was, I was upset. I stood in the park for three hours, and then we just walked out. And that's how we won. My team didn't have to play to win the championship. You know, yeah. but it was, it was, it was, that, that, that was. Ah, ah, lyric. <laughs> yeah. Just, just uh, quick, just quick. <laughs> yeah, and so, uh, yeah, that was the game that never happened. They kept trying to get it to happen, like Madison Square Garden, Barclays, and mm-hmm. whatever the case, and we was like, nah, we got to do this on the concrete. We got to take it to the hood. Yeah. Yeah, but it was, it was, it was amazing. It, it's a legendary story. Today's video is sponsored by Shinola. Born in Detroit, Shinola is a design brand with unwavering commitment to building products and experiences. With unmistakable sense of American design, craft, and quality. In 2012, Shinola transformed a 12,000 square foot raw space into a state-of-the-art watch facility in Detroit. The first American watch factory in the United States in 50 years. The long tradition of Detroit watchmaking is well underway. So today, we got the Black Blizzard. You ever seen one of these before? No. They say it is as tough as the time it honors. Mm-hmm. As the Argonite 5050 chronograph movement crafted from ultralight, ultra strong titanium. And this one is the White Hurricane. It's the sister watch to the Black Blizzard. Check this out though. It features a white dial with a double domed sapphire crystal. The entire face of the White Hurricane glows blue in the dark. Use the code ROOMMATES for 15% off your next purchase. Terms and conditions may apply. If you had to run it back today, who would your five be? Today? Today. Um, you would definitely be in it. Uh, no, don't pick me. Don't pick me. No, I would, though. No, okay, right? I appreciate I it. Don't pick you. me. Yeah, I, I would. I would. They don't count fouls on those. Like um, that. Okay. Damn, well, how could you? This, this is a be cheat code these days, right? <laughs> so you, uh, John Moran, if they would allow him to play, Cause that's mm-hmm. what I had. I had Stephen AI. Mm-hmm. You know, um, uh, John Morant. Um, as a big man, damn, I would use the Joker, for sure. So I would use the Joker. Um, Giannis, I would have gassed Giannis to come to the Rucker. <laughs> like in my day of coaching, I would have. Ga- I would have been in Milwaukee. Or so. I would have been <laughs> on his as pause to come out there and score a you know Kevin the De- Kevin Durant was he scored like 82 points in, in the third quarter like they ch- he don't like me telling this story they chased him out the rucker like they want to beat him up <laughs> he whipped they ass so bad that they wanted to literally beat him up out there like it was just and he was doing like almost like the Kate and Clark show he was, he was there checking it out. Mixtape, boy. Whoa, yeah, dude, that mixtape was going Whoa. crazy. I mean, from the other side of the court. I'm not talking about no, I remember that video. half court. Oh. Oh, no, I'm not, I was there at the game. I'm not talking about half court. He was, they checked it out, passed it to him, and five guys would go like this, and he was hitting them shit. Water, 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 water. He scored like 80 points. I said, oh, wow. 
I was out there. They chased him into the truck. He had to go. <laughs> like they was like, yo, yo, they was mad. They was big mad. And he wasn't playing scrubs. This is another thing if you come out there and you play against scrubs. So what I said, I said four, right? Yeah, I didn't say more. five. You're missing like a three man. If you, or you I'm, do... not, I'm really, I'm really, I'm re oh, Jason Tatum. Mm. Mm. Jason Tatum. Mm. That's a mean team. What I said, you, I said John Morant, Jason Tatum, the Joker, and Giannis. It's over. Jay, I keep thinking if I have a six man, it would be Booker. Mm -hmm. I keep, mm -hmm. I keep, he keep coming up in my, in my, in my brain, like, you know, what I really happen, love his game. What would happen if Jalen tries to take a charge at the Rucker? Oh. Oof. <laughs> but, you know, um, oof. oof. You good. know, me personally, <laughs> I, 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 you know. Because he I, loves to take charges. I wouldn't say I was dirty, but we had one guy that just was to hit you. Like, like, so if some, like, I, I'm one of those coaches you're not coming up there with layups all day and, and this now. Somebody got to hit you. I'm not talking about hurt you, break your legs. I'm not saying that, but you got to feel something. Oh. Who makes you feel it? Who makes you pause when you go <laughs> to the basket? Who makes you like, you know, oh, man, I got to play this guy. But you can't really do that no more. You yeah. do you do that, you're going to get yeah, thrown out. Yeah, fine. Off. You're losing money now. Yeah, but somebody's hitting you, man. You got to get, who I mean, do you dread going up against? Um, that's just so strong that you know it's going to be like... Rick Bronson. <laughs> Yo, Al Harrington told me every time he played against Yao Ming because his legs were like on his back, he would miss the next two games. Every time. Every time he played them, he'd be so sore for two extra games for him to come back because Yao Ming was just so mm. big and, and just brutal. Ooh. Sabonis was like that, bro. My fir my my first year in the Sabonis league, first and second Sacramento? year. Yeah, but he when he was <laughs> he's tough. He was in Indy, and he it was just and it wasn't like post work. It was just like him setting screens, and he was. You gotta hit you by mistake. Some yeah, people bro. hit you by mistake and I it hurts. I couldn't walk the next day. I'm, I'm like, bro, I couldn't. Walk. My no, my I'm legs were so I'm sore. You, Al Harris is a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Al Harris is a big guy. He said he couldn't play every two games after um. Uh, playing Yao Ming. Yeah, I would bro. say it's never really like someone like knocking you out of the air because like people don't really do that as much. But like fighting around screens and stuff like that. Yeah. I would say Steven Adams. Mm. Mm. Steve uh, um, That's the North is here, right? <laughs> Nurkic. Yeah, that boy Steven and Adams looked like one of the the white wings. So what's the <laughs> but the, 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 don't go on that side, huh? He's yeah, just, no, I mean, no. he has the strongest dude in the league, hands down. Steve-O? Uh, yeah. Top either, three. Yeah. Wow. It's either him or Zion. Yeah. And, had, and, they, were the, and they were there together, bro. That's what it says. <laughs> yeah, I was just, Zion. I was still remember, like, Steven Adams would just do, like, Turkish get-ups for, like, 100, 125-pound, like, kettlebells. That's, just that's straight yeah. arm, bro. He was just, that's he was it? just stupid strong. That's it? You ever did the Turkish get up? Yeah. Nah, you ain't, you ain't see with these, bro. You can see. You'd be surprised. You can see. You'd be surprised. We can see. We can call, call Steve O. No, we can call Steve O in the summer. We all can, we, we all can go <laughs> live ways together, bro. Oh, man. Nah, but you that, know, the, yeah. game, the game is different, right? So I watch you guys play. And, and you, right? I be trying to explain to people, like, you shooting angles, right? Your shit is all angle, the way you the way you shoot. You're not just straight up shooting. You coming to the basket in angles, and and now I feel like when you shoot, you gotta anticipate to help defense. The game is so different now, mm -hmm. right? It's like you just know somebody is coming behind you, so you gotta shoot like mm -hmm. in an angle, like. Did you learn like that since you was a kid, or that was something you had to adapt to in the A? Uh, you learn it. Um, I mean, definitely adapt to it once you get older because there's, I mean, the older you get, the better the players are. Mm -hmm. It's obviously, the older you get, obviously, you play against, like, seven-footers. You're playing against dudes who are not only seven feet but they can touch the top of the backboard. You play against dudes who are my height who can touch the top of the backboard. So you're always anticipating somebody's coming from over there. You're all, like, I would say for the most part, 
when I'm in like a pick and roll situation, mm -hmm. if I hit the man guarding me on the screen, mm -hmm. I'm like 95% not worried about him anymore. I'm worried oh. about the help and whatever's in front of me. Oh, you passed him. Yeah. If He's you were gone. like in a one-on-one -on -one situation, once you like get past their hips or you make them like shift or whatever, then you start seeing like what's behind, like what's the defense behind doing. So like, you're coming? always, you're constantly like looking at the help to see like if you have a straightaway angle, which is very rare, or someone helps and then your teammates slide up into different spots, you can see that. But I mean, how crazy does it get? Because you you push through, yeah, right. You push through, and and sometimes I see three guys coming at you. And you might still, you, not in a selfish way, but you might take the shot. Mm. Like, when you got to, you'll take the shot. Not in a selfish no, way. No, he's no, just an asshole. Huh? Well, he's oh, just, yeah, yeah that's your man. You know, he going to do that to you. I got guys like that <laughs> torture me all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's his, that's his job. Yeah, man. You're supposed to score, man. Yeah, I was no, shooting I mean, with three people. Sometimes the shot, <laughs> sometimes the shot clock is uh, winding down and... Gotta let it go. Gotta let it go. And then obviously the way we play, if I get the ball on the rim, I know we got I got three guys going offensive rebound. Mm. I got one dude. No, he going for he rebounds. Going for it. No, going for it. Got Mitch and Isaiah going for it. Yeah. And depending where like Dante is on the mm -hmm. on the perimeter. Now like, the, 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 I almost was uh in a state of depression when we got rid of quickly uh -huh. and RJ. And I'm not gonna lie to you, but basketball is my life. Besides me, so you know, I watch basketball every single day, even summer league, everything. And I wasn't up on OG like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so since he came, I think y'all like 18 out of 20 games. Mm -hmm. What is it that you see? I know what I see, but what is it that you see that every time you guys play, the team gets even better? I think the I think he did we we fit well with him. He do, he does so much defensively that he like it was times he can guard point guards like times he'll be guarding Maxi and then like mm -hmm. there were other times where, like he's guarding he played Denver he's guarding or Houston he's guarding like Sagoon or somebody in the mm -hmm. post. So he's like defensively is just. He's all over, but he's really like a one-man defense. So he had that. I think he swipes at everything. Yeah. yeah. So even stuff he can't. I watch him try to swipe at people. He ain't got no chance to even come next mm -hmm. to him. They gonna be on the other side of the wall. He's like, yeah. So you always thinking like, oh my god, mm -hmm. this guy's coming. Yeah. You know, but I mean the dynamic. I mean, you can't make that up. Yeah. You're like 18 out of 20. Yeah, he, you know? I mean, he does stuff that you can't teach. Like, it's yeah. just, he's a freak. Yeah. It's just it's Then offensively, that. knocks down shots, space the floor, cuts, it's weird gets, as, e like, gets easy buckets. The weirdest easy part about buckets. him, like, cutting and stuff, like, the first couple games, weeks, like, he didn't really understand our offense or like, didn't fully know where he was supposed to be in certain moments. But then, like, when one of his drives, either he spaces to the corner or spaces to an open spot, or he mm -hmm. cuts at the perfect time to get, like, get a dunk. Mm -hmm. So I'm, he just has a good feel for Feel for everything, everything. moving mm -hmm. without the ball. Right. Well, today, one of my favorite players announced his retirement, Rajon Rondo. Right, yeah, what you dope. learned from the Rondo and Rondo? Dope, wine. man. Wine? Yeah, wine. Why Rondo's responsible but, for Josh's love of wine. It's part, yeah. of it, part of it. Damn, that's not oh. what we wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't want that. Now, every time I see what's my man, Pertusa, my man, he's been playing good for y'all too, for 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 the Knicks. Who? Precious. Oh Pachula. yeah, yeah. Oh my God. They always. No, no, no. Time out. Time out. Time out. No, 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 no. Time out. He said Bertusa. <laughs> Bertusa. <laughs> that, that's a that's a good I'm one. I'm thinking wine. I'm thinking Bertusa. wine. They, every time he's in he's the game, they're Patrice. like, he's an he's a uh, conquistador of the wine. I'm like, damn, how much wine this guy drink? Yeah. Like so, Ron. Ron, Ron Though, though is dope because I, I I had him one year, um, and he and he for for young dudes he's great, cause we I was uh in L A second unit, so there be times where we'll, he'll have a you know on road games he'll have a suite, so he'll have like the second unit it'll be me him, um, depending on the big Michael Beasy Javale like it'll just be like KCP sometimes, um, 
he'll have us all go go into his room. We'll watch film together. We'll do all the, and so it was just mm -hmm. cool just to see his mind go. And I'm like, I'm really surprised he's not he's not a coach. Like whenever whenever he really wants a coach, coach at that level, like he'll be he'll great. Be but it was just he loved he basketball. From a little bit from afar. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't really. But he just watching him. Yeah, just some watching. I talked to him like after game stuff. To me, I think he's like Circus Soleil. Yeah. He was out there dancing, and he would always find the open man. Always. And so uh, I've, I was always impressed with his game, with how he saw the floor. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's he liked to give it up more than than even take the shot. And mm -hmm. so shout out to. There was Ron one time him. in L.A. Josh, we we lived together in L.A. It was like. It was late at night. It was like two in the morning after a game or something, and we were hanging out. And he called you, and it was super clear he was watching film from that game. He's like, "My bad, bro. I missed you on that kick." Oh, and then yeah, the third, yeah, that's my I'm bad. Like, bro, I'm like, bro, like wow. two in the morning after the game. So he's focused, bro. Like he, like we. That was 2000. That was 2019. We were like, we we actually had a a, a good like we were so, like at the Lakers like we were solid like we weren't great but we were we were straight at the beginning of the year. And that all changed that Christmas Day game where we, we went in to go to say an Oracle. They defended champs, Steph, Clay, K D and we, we beat them by like twenty, but Braun Braun got hurt in like the first half. And then you had it was like playoff Rondo came out just he just controlled just controlled the game, put guys into wherever they needed to be, got guys involved, took that, that, just took over the game. And he like Braun got hurt, but then the one that really like we, I felt like we probably could have stayed afloat with Rondo, but Rondo broke his hand literally at the end of the game. But, like, Bron that, that was, like, you got to see, like, real Rondo kind of, like, Rondo's close up. Like it was this, crazy. It's like this. He's, 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 once you let him get in there, it's over mm -hmm. for you. He's going to make the pass. Yeah, maestro. Yeah, 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 he up in there. Once I see him Dictated dancing. Dictated everything. Once I see him dancing in there, mm -hmm. it's over. Speaking, yeah. of, speaking of goats, man, we got – Vince Carter and Chauncey Billups elected to the Hall of Fame today. Man, that was beautiful. And Josh, you played for Chauncey. Yeah, I'll text him today. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, that's my guy, man. Good, just love, loves basketball, hard nose, like competitive as hell, too. So it was, it was dope to see that. Vince Carter. Vince Carter. Arm in the rim. Mm hmm. Stupid <laughs> athletic. Nah, this guy, you know, that's one of the missed opportunities. Vince Carter and Tracy McGrady, I think they should have stood together. And uh, it's almost like uh, what they had in OKC mm -hmm. with KD Harden off the bench. Uh, West, Russ. like, man, they had the squad. They just ain't know they had the squad mm -hmm. like that, <laughs> you know? And so, but, but Vince Carter, you know, Chauncey Billups, you know, big game. But I used to hate my man, um, the center. Of Detroit, what was wrong, man? Ben Wallace. Wallace. Oh man, Ben Wallace, man, he was a problem. Mm -hmm. He was strong as hell. Every time I see David Lee, my Knicks play him, they were so shook at this guy. Like, I mean, like scared. Yeah. Like you know, he would hit him, and you'll see them. <laughs> like walking around, I'll be like, oh my That's God. That's the thing now. Like, you put ben, ben Wallace in the league now, he's not going to be able to do so. Like, he's going yeah, he he to be, it's yeah, he's going to be obviously like the defensive it's, it's stopper. Just, he is it's different shot, because, like, can't so be say Mitchell physical. Robinson is so big, but he's, a, he's, a, he's an original big man. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, he don't want to run out there to that three. But with mm -hmm. Bayamba shooting them threes. You know what I mean? The game different. The big man ain't they, yeah. they can stay. The big man ain't really a big man no more. Yeah. Nah, bro, they guards. <laughs> nah. They guards, bro. I ain't up. Yeah. I mean, I, nah, I was just gonna say, nah, I was just say like when Mignon, like Oh no. I knew he like I knew right, he was let's good. Talk about generational. Wimby. I knew he was gonna oh, be no. good. No, 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 no. Let's talk about Wimby, man. He, yeah, he, I was at the draft. He did do it. I was at the draft and very humble. Very, you guys are both very hum humble, but in the humblest way, this man was not, he was humble, mm -hmm. right? And everybody knew when Bayamba was walking through. Don't get that. Mm -hmm. They all knew what time was. They was <laughs> you know, it's crazy because Bad Bunny, is, in his album in Spanish, he says, uh, 
you know, since I've been in the game, it'd be pretty cool to be number two, right? Mm -hmm. he, he number one in the ring, he told. Mm -hmm. And he's just saying, I'm so much number one, it's pretty cool to be number two. Wimby was walking through that thing, humble though. No arrogancy whatsoever, but they all knew. It was Wimby time. Mm -hmm. You know, and they start talking that OKC chat. This, yo, bro, that's Wimba Yamba, man. Wimba Yamba, y'all got, got problems with him in the future. He's he's only going to get confident, going to mm -hmm. get a little bit heavier, get better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Wimby is unbelievable. He's like a video game. How many years away do you guys think he is from an MVP conversation or being in that race <laughs> yesterday? <laughs> You think he's there? I'm about to say. When they start winning <laughs> yeah. But you, I'm saying when they start, like, if, if they were, if they, they get a top five yeah. seed, mm -hmm. he's in the conversation. I was about to say, if, if they had 40 wins right now, he's top four in, M in MVP vote. For sure. It's unbelievable. He's yeah. Wimba Yamba. He's, 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 uh, he's, he's unreal. All my years of watching basketball, he is just unreal because you could be like, he, he could be checking you. Yeah. And he could be coming back here. He could turn at any moment and smack the ball. Like, this guy's, he covers the whole floor. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I think about how funny it would be to, to be, like, watching the NBA in the 90s and then somehow look in a time machine, uh, a crystal ball, and just see a 7-4 guy crossing you up and pulling up from 30 feet. It's just your mind would explode. Yeah. Your head would explode. Yeah, you, 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 could, you, could you couldn't it. comprehend yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, even Chris like, Yo, that's fake. Like, KD, I mean. You would think that's fake. KD was the first of his kind, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but Wimby is. Uh, I just want to know how he shoots, bro. Like his hands are so, a, his hands are so man, massive. He shoot, I don't he understand. Shoot like water, though. <laughs> he shoot water. He like, like you Lace know, some up. people got an ugly shot. <laughs> people got an ugly shot. That boy ain't got an ugly shot, mm -hmm. bro. The form is, he's there. He's doing all this yeah. and coming. Woo! I knew, Unless he, I knew. he needs one step yeah. to dunk the ball. Yeah. The, cra the, the craziest joint was when it was last year. Before he got to the league, he had the. Uh, it was a video of when he shot the step back three. AI, Stephon Marbury, they would have embarrassed Wimba Yamba already. You, you ain't think of embarrassing them like that. <laughs> to me. You know he's, <laughs> he is guaranteed to do this. You know, he's, if one of you little guys just super killer crossed over this guy like a, like a Jamal Crook, but AI and Stephon Marbury, we have embarrassed him already. You would have been seeing the clip of him falling down, you know, and I'm taking it. That, that, you don't, you don't want to embarrass I would him. Say, I would say embarrass him. Meaning? Eh, I, he's a guard. Like, it's not a tradition. Oh, so you think you can't do that to him? No, no. I'm not saying you can't do it to him. I'm just saying he's not. It's like, going to be harder to do It's going to be harder to it's just make that dude fall. It's a little bit harder than a young being of this because I yeah. remember. And, it, and it's, it's harder because he doesn't have to be like. He can play back like, on well, you. Yeah, he can, yes. be, he can be back. He can be 10 feet he, off yeah, of you and still and block a shot. And still. Just so it's like, I don't, for him, he don't got to be close enough for you to really hit hit him with dribble with moves the, and with all that. The rock. Yeah, because he's like... <laughs> then he got flashed by the pop of rocks. Yeah, like... It was, yo, yeah. yo, boy, yeah, listen, I used to tell AI, you know, to play against Shaq. When he was playing the chip against Shaq, I was like, yo, dunk on him. See, yeah. that would have that ended AI's career. <laughs> yes, right? I told him about 30 times. He said, you crazy? He's going to throw me into his stance. As, as, much, as, Shaq, <laughs> as much as Shaq talks about... Oh, Being a nice guy. No, no, no. Shaq was like, whenever he talks about, like, oh, back in my day, we would have we put him on the floor, put him on the floor, make sure he's on the floor. That's why a dude's like... Imagine AI trying to go dunk on Shaq. I tried. I mm -hmm. tried to gas him, but he wouldn't no, do it. <laughs> absolutely not. Can't do it. Decision. Stop. Stop five feet short. Shoot a little floater. Yeah. Two points. Yeah, Go he the other way. for the dunk. But I, I told him, right? Imagine he would have caught a, a a miracle dunk on Shaq like that. Twenty years later, we would still been playing it every day. Like, oh my God! Like, yo, hey, I, I, I would have took the chance. <laughs> has, anyone, has anyone ever dunked on Shaq? No. Like, dunked on Shaq. No. Somebody have had he he had to get caught once, bro. I ain't see it. I've never seen it. Not just. 
I've never seen nobody dunk Maybe on Shaq. Maybe Yao, but that doesn't really, I mean, that's like a... Yeah, yeah, that, I'm talking that, like, that you get dunked on by, I'm like, talking like, yeah, that, that don't count. I'm not saying, like, yeah, that, I'm well, talking Wemby, about... It don't count if you get dunked on by them, bro. Man, i never forget Jalen Brown, um, when he dunked on LeBron two times in one game. That's how I knew LeBron was, was getting playoffs? a little older. Yeah, <laughs> he punched it. Came back down. I was like, oh, my God. Like, this is getting out of, you know, uh... Is getting out of control. Sure. Like he, he got the number. I mean, you know. Are you googling? He's googling. Has anybody it ever yeah, shot? I'm trying to see. You, you Google that. You Google that. I got. I want to switch gears real quick. Okay. We talked. We were talking about a lot of pro. We talked about Caitlin. Talked a little bit of college. Wow. What are you? What are your thoughts on the transfer portal? The how, transfer portal. And how people can just go anywhere they want. It's crazy because I seen that on the screen and right. I was a little bit confused. Really? Yeah. Like, it's like, uh, imagine you could just go wherever you want to go. It's like free agency. repercussions. Yeah, you don't have to sit I, out of here. That's cool, but I'm about loyalty. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Building something. You know, I never like those type of guys that jump from team to team or go somewhere where. Right. You know, like, no disrespect, KD. I love you. you you're one of the greatest of all time. I never respected that Golden State. Right. That move right there. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, you know, I think you build your team. Now, if your time's up, your contract is four years, if this ain't it for you, then you move on. All right, hold on. Hold on. Now, now I'll ask you another question. Are his two rings valid? Who? KD's. Yeah, you got to win. Because, They're valid, correct? You see, the problem with you is you guys ain't champs. You guys ain't NBA champs, but I was telling them outside earlier, everybody wants to score 50 points in Madison Square Garden right. every night. Right. Like the 50th, the 15th guy on the bench is coming to score 50 points. Williams the other day was cooking. It's like everybody's cooking. like, you, you, you go to these guys, you cooking. go to these guys cooking. cooking. No, you go to these guys' house. I go to a lot of NBA players' houses, and they got plaques up on the wall like the night I scored 41 in the garden. Yeah, yeah really? So the Knicks ain't shit, but you, you, you got a plaque of how you scored 41 at yeah. the garden? So every night they coming to y'all like it's a chip. Yeah. You understand? So when, to win a chip is the hardest thing to do. We've seen so many greats never win a chip. To actually be a part of winning two chips is, yeah, you got to play the game to win the chip, you know? No, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think like a lot of people are like, oh, like, those aren't real. Like, he doesn't, like, those aren't, those aren't yeah, valid. No, those, he got them. They're valid. real, dog. Yeah. yeah. Dude was the finals MVP. You got to win. Twice. Like, yeah, he wasn't, like, just on the team. Like, he was. No, but he was dead. Cooking. Now, you mm -hmm. know, the KD's dead nice, bro. Yeah. Like, it's like, forget about it. But, you know, he, he chose to do that. But, hey, he's, he's smarter than us. You know, he got his two chips. <laughs> How many players, you know, had incredible uh, legacies yeah. but didn't get the chip? And, unfortunately, it's almost like a boxer, right? A boxer knock out 39 guys in a row, lose one fight. Oh, he's washed up. <laughs> Yo, this guy's over. Yo, he lost one fight. He won 28. Right? And so it's the same thing. Like, you got guys who are the greatest of all time, but because they didn't get that chip, um, and, you know, he got the chip. He, he secured the win. We we here talking about are they legit, are they not under? No, no matter, legit. he got him. That's, he got him. That's just my Sorry. point of view. Like, he, he, got was, him. he got him. I was telling the fan the other day when they, they didn't give you the M1, right? <laughs> uh, I was telling the fan, I said, I was telling the whole game. To me, I like to win by a lot. Like, mm -hmm. so if I'm coaching, like, I like to win by 20, and then y'all start playing, you know, playing around the passes, the alley oops, the dish. Don't play around till we st we up by 20. Now, but all I really want is one. Because mm -hmm. all we got to do is win by one point. Yeah. That's it. Wins a win. Yeah. Yeah, wins, wins a win, win, bro. I don't care if it's ugly, mm -hmm. if it's cute, if it's nothing. If you yeah. keep winning, I don't care. Like, as long as you win, that's, that's, that's. Especially the East is so gridlocked right now. Every game matters. You know, sure. every game really matters. Well, you know, uh, the East is, my prediction is uh, the Knicks going to Eastern Conference Finals. There we go. <laughs> and, there we then, go. Uh, and then we got to fight them. We got to fight Boston, you know.
for sure. And, and you don't. Them guys, man, they made a big move with uh, Drew Holiday. That was probably the biggest move in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And then uh, besides OG, let's let yo listen. That's not <laughs> normal for the man to come on a team and win 18 games out of 20. That is not normal. I know y'all did it together. That's not normal. Okay. There's, there, there's an important time when he got on the team. He won what? Nine First trade deadline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trade. Nine. But OG yeah, 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 Allen yeah, yeah, yeah. did that. Yeah, no, 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 but he I'm just saying <laughs> he ain't that OG, win streak record, bro. OG is, uh, he's, 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 let's say, a good luck charm, I guess. Sure. I don't know how to explain it. And so, uh, before he got to New York, did you guys? I didn't I was, know him. I would say, did you guys have him played against him? I you, watched him play. I was in Toronto yeah. a week before yeah. we traded for him and, and didn't, didn't notice OG. Did you notice how on effective? God. <laughs> did you know how on, effective he'd be? On God. I, I, I knew him a little bit. Do you Every know time what I time saw him. it was? Like, did you? So how you woke up and you heard RJ and quick boy, this is good shit back nah, here. RJ, RJ and hotel, quickly is gone. Yeah, we were in the hotel. How did you? And what happened? I was, I was at first. I was like, we were in Indiana. Just flew to Indiana. We had a back to back. It was like New Orleans, Indiana. I think my knee was hurting, so I'm texting my agent. I'm like, bro, I don't think I can play today. Like, I, I think I'm out. I, I can't play. So you don't tell the team? You got to tell your no, agent to tell the team talk. when your knee is hurt? No, nah, I do, but I'm like, I'm, a talk, I'm talking to my agent first. And like, and oh, I didn't know that. So I'm like, talking, I'm like, I don't know if I can go today. Da -da. And he was like, and then literally right when I'm texting him, like, it happened. He was like, yeah, y'all just traded for OG, so you gonna have to play tonight. Cause we had, we didn't have guy, we didn't we like we didn't, we didn't have nobody. That's that that. Okay, and that's so how, you and that's how we found out. So you just found out, like, I, did I, you I, feel bad? Did oh, you say yeah. this? Yo, who is this guy? I was, Why I, would they do that? One one, I knew. You always hear rumors, so you always mm -hmm. always hear rumors. You never know what's true, whatever. So me and RJ are in the meal room, right? RJ like gets up, like shakes my hands, all right, bro, I'm going to Toronto. I'm like, <laughs> all right, <what's, laughs> you crazy. good? We, yeah, we're like, not playing tonight. Are you, are you good? Like, it he's just sounds like a day trip. It's not like a day trip. It's from Toronto. So I'm like, oh, like, he just, something happened, he's going home. I'm like, are you good? He's like, yeah, 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 I'm just, just going to Toronto. I was like, all right. But then he proceeds to hug everyone else. Like, in the, there was like, like seven, eight people in the middle room, just hugs them and walks out. I'm just like, like what's going on? And then my phone, I can see a little tweet. RJ Barrett, Manuel quickly trades to Toronto for OG. I was just like, oh shit. Like, he literally just said bye to me. I didn't know he was saying bye. Mm -hmm. He so understands then, the assignment, the assignment. But unfortunately for uh, professional players, you know, at any moment they could tap you on the shoulder and be like, yo, you gotta go. He handled it like a per pro, like, no, like a pro. Like sure, a, I was like a, I was shocked. I felt like yeah, like OG's been great for us, and I love him having on the team. But like, that was like a personal moment. I was like, damn, yeah, this dude's gone. I was a teammate for a year and a half. Like you, people are like, oh, we're interchangeable in mm -hmm. people's eyes. It ain't like, like that. It ain't nah, you. Are, you were being with feelings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was that. hurt, <laughs> devastated, like RJ. Like this toughness, but really hurt for quickly mm -hmm. because I believe he could be a superstar. And um, and he was just buckets, man. I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> and my guys from, from Toronto who live out there were jumping up and down. They was ecstatic. <laughs> like, yo. They was like, no, no, but OG, he cool. He cool, <laughs> but yo, RJ, quickly, yeah. yo. How did y'all do that, Joe? I was like. I was so confused. I was like, yo, this is, I don't know. And I messed up one time. Right? I messed up one time. When we traded for Porzingis, I was pissed. And I did it publicly. Like, yo, I don't know why they got this guy, yo. And I kind of ate my words because in, 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 when you look at his whole career, he's really, really talented. And so we could have used him on the Knicks. I just underestimated him. Right. So this, I learned from that to just... <laughs> Keep my opinions to myself. Yeah. And OG's, he's, he's, I mean, he's the, been an incredible fit. The cool thing about 
the cool thing about the NBA too is like the 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 line between guys is thinner than you realize. So like, look at Deuce McBride, right? Deuce really wasn't getting any minutes. Oh no, no, no we disrespect knew he was nice. to Quick. You know, we knew Deuce was able work. to step up. Yeah. I didn't know Deuce was was gonna average well, I knew what, I was 22 watching. points a game. I it's watch. Nice. No sir, I watch. I know who's good, who's not. Trust me, I knew that that boy was good. He had to get some run. People fighting for their lives. They fighting for their next contract. They fighting like you need that dog in you, that anger. Yeah, so why you think people love a Draymond Green? Because you know what you're getting every night, some dirty plays. He going to try to he going to try to make his team win. Right, like yeah. he he's, he got that dog in him. But like I feel like it's always different cuz I feel like a lot of guys that have that. You got that though. You have that. You know, Chihuahua. Yeah, because he's a little guy. He's a motif. This, <laughs> this guy's a little guy, but he go up. Yo, he, you see the rebound? Yeah, that's not easy. Come on, Jay. Yeah, man, you don't, don't get no man rebound, like that. You just that score. boy get tough, rebound, man. Bro. Yo, this boy tough. He tough. I'm yeah, telling it, you. Like, I don't know. I, like, now it's just the, the league is just different now. Now it's all like you got young guys that are just that come in social media and all that like you don't really a lot of guys don't have to have that dog to have like some of the success you know what i mean well, you I, gotta win sound like, like just old social time, media ain't really no but nah, social, it's just, it's just what it's social everything media about is exactly that yeah. social currency it's not actually real life yeah and so what you gotta understand is that you know if they hot on the gram because they wore a hot outfit to the game and shit like that that don't mean nothing it's about the results on the court. Mm. I say that a lot about him all the time because I think um, it works against you. It's sad that this is where we at in America, right? Then it works against you that you're so humble, <laughs> that you're so much a, a cool guy. You know, you score 40 points and you be like, yo, my team made this and this yeah, and he, that. He lame and you got another guys, you know, they make the shot, they doing all this, they color their hair, they this and that, and people think they the man, but you you killing them every night. But that's what you mean, but that's not actual results. Yeah. yeah. When it's you get on that, on that, yeah, you got... More. That don't mean nothing, bro. It don't, but I guess it's what mean it don't, but that's what people like. What means something is the win, to, the results. I told you it only takes one point, bro. For one sure. move, one play. You know, same thing with baseball. Last strike. Mm -hmm. Anything can happen up to the last strike. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't look at it like that. I look at, and, and you guys are the perfect testament because y'all been under man. Everybody been hurt. You guys are way too little to be winning all these games the way you are. <laughs> now I'm telling you, but everybody plays their part to make it happen, and mm -hmm. we gotta salute the coach because his style is like that, and you bought into that. You know, y'all really playing some old school basketball. Y'all playing some old school basketball. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because we thought, we thought if we went back 20 years and we seen Wimba Yamba doing that, it was a good, you know, these guys are doing it the old fashioned way. Yep. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 you know, they're getting these crappy wins. Sometimes it's ugly, sometimes it ain't. Every day somebody else is, is a hero. You know what I mean? That's yeah. old school basketball, man. That's not the new school. You know well, listen, I, listen, I'm a Knicks fan, right? Since your father played. Okay, let's Since be Since he was on the team. Since he was on the team. <laughs> yeah, now your play, father yeah. played. That's my he was man. There. That's my man, too. All right, but I mean, he played, man. And <laughs> yeah, so don't be trying to boy. do your yeah, new funny, seats. man. This guy's crazy, man. Who, <laughs> me? And so, yes. <laughs> and so, um,. Since your father played, I'm a, I'm a nigga. You, you messed up my training. Thing. You, you're terrible, man. <laughs> you guys are terrible. But, uh, you know, I'm a Nick fan, and it's been ever since that era, since I've seen our team travel across America playing other teams where I see more jerseys in the crowd, chance of MVP, yeah. chance of, you know, that game of Charlotte was so disrespectful. Hmm. Like, I would have hated to be a Charlotte, a Charlotte Hornets fan, and y when y'all played them, that, that was crowd that was, was like, let's go next. MVP. <laughs> I would have died being a Charlotte fan. I would have been like, oh, no, <laughs> this is crazy. It was, Charlotte was like that last Miami. year. It's, wait, Miami's always has a, be a decent crowd. Orlando, 
Charlotte, DC. DC's obviously, like obviously, that. Obviously Brooklyn. Philly was like that. Philly, no, Philly this year is surprisingly. surprisingly. Like, I see we won by tw- like 15 years. Like that, but I seen y'all go somewhere in the West Coast where it was like that too. I forget where y'all was at. Where they they they, they was acting up for the Knicks. They Man. was acting. Up. I don't know if it was against the Clippers. I, I don't know where it was at. Y'all played a game. I don't know if it was Sam, in uh, Golden State. Y'all played a game where the, where, where the Knicks fans was out, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh my god. Even the West Coast. I was like, the funniest thing. <laughs> Because, like, obviously, like, we're in Miami. Yeah, the chance, the chance was loud the yeah. first half. Because the, fr- the first quarter, <laughs> yeah, you got to the line. Because, you, know, you know, Miami fans, like, good fans, but they take a they little while late. to get into the arena. So it was like the first. You know, they first, fly, they sexy, they <laughs> first got the quarter, linens on, they yeah. smoke the cigars. And then they towards the end, then they like, came like back they were still, the yeah, the, the fourth quarter, they were still there and they weren't as well, loud. I'm talking yeah. New York, yeah. I live across the street from the arena, so it's just, just too many. Uh, you know, the plane ride from Miami to New York. It's almost like taking the train yeah, from Brooklyn easy. to Manhattan. Mm-hmm. It's just the same commute. Yep. <laughs> and so I, I could go to a restaurant in New York City on a Monday, see everybody in there, be like, yo, what's up, y'all? And literally Tuesday, I'll be at a car bone in Miami, and the same people from the New York restaurant is in Miami. Mm-hmm. So it's very New York, Miami. Yeah. You know, so it is a rivalry. Yeah, bro. I did it this morning. I Get out of Miami, morning. bro. You did it this morning? Yeah. One question for you. So on the the, uh, plane ride up this morning, I was watching 38 at the Garden, the Jeremy Lin documentary. Obviously, you've been a Knicks fan for a while, but were you, were you, no, no, you're not in it, but I was, I was going to ask what, what being a Knicks fan during Lin Sanity was like. Well, it was sad when they traded him. Yeah. You know, the Knicks, they started with the new regime with Leon Rose and, and World Wide West and, and, you know, we finally feeling fans feel like they have a say. You know, Linsanity was so crazy. We were supposed to keep Linsanity in New York. He was on fire here. Mm-hmm. And it was unbelievable. It was, it was Robin Hood. It was uh, Cinderella. It was like, you just couldn't believe it. Like, you were right. like, not again, yo, Linsanity. It was sick. It was sick. But I felt betrayed as a Knicks fan when uh, they let him go. Somewhere else because he, 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 I mean, at that time he was a glimmer of hope. He was like, we ain't had nothing moving like that. And then you get somebody a little sanity, and you just trade him. That was that was very sad. The trading of Lynn Sanity. Yeah. What's your favorite uh, MSG moment? <laughs> or you can I give think, us a couple. I think I, I think the Larry uh, Larry, Larry Johnson. Johnson shot. I was at that game. I was at that game. You was at that game. I think it was three. <laughs> That's so you crazy. seen it like that? The whole, all well, the fans was, jump I, up. Oh, you was like three. I was like three, so I was there. But so you yeah. wasn't there. I wasn't there. Yeah, the little, no, I was there. Baby uh, headphones on. <laughs> Probably. No, insane not. moments was watching Jordan play the, the Knicks, but I was I was broke, so I would be up a deck, up a deck, and they was he was this little. When I'm watching him, you know, one thing I do every time I go courtside is I I pray a lot and thank you God, and I look up to the. To the, to the Raptors and be like, yo, I used to be up there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm so blessed to be able to sit courtside. But I used to be up there for that, for the Michael Jordan was this little balling in the garden. You know what I'm saying? And I used to actually scout tickets. So I've been to more Nick games than probably your average person. So I used to scout tickets in Yankee State. Tracy, uh, Tracy uh, Morgan. Tracy Morgan was a scalper. I met him scalping <laughs> tickets. It's so much fun scalping tickets, running from the cops, <laughs> hustling. You know, you buy a ticket, somebody. So the way this works, I don't know if y'all know how it goes. Somebody bought four tickets. Two people say they can't come with them last minute. They stuck with the four tickets. They paid a hundred dollars face value for the ticket. They sell it to yo. Here's forty forty dollars. Give me for the pair. Mm-hmm. Now if I just sell it at a hundred, I made. Eighty dollars a ticket, but mm-hmm. of course I'm trying to sell it for four fifty because mm-hmm. they are the premier seats of the garden. Okay. So you out there hustling and bustling, and in the meanwhile you're trying to make a dollar. The cops are chasing you. You under man. I know the garden. I know the. I know. I know the garden inside out. 
like I, like I used to scout. You know what I'm saying? To just go through the Penn Station to the other side, to the this, to the this. Like I know the whole, the whole thing. You know, so I've had many moments in the garden. You know, many moments. One uh, one question. So we're a couple days removed from Fat Joe and Friends at the Apollo. Wow. Talk about that moment. What did that mean for you? Because it felt like it was a historical moment for you, for it New was. York, for hip hop. Well, it was, uh, you know, I started amateur night at the Apollo. So, you know, if you don't know what the Apollo is, is they could be brutal to you. Um, and I went over there and I won four weeks in a row, amateur night in Harlem. And so I try to replay it. You know, like you guys had skill. You guys made it to Villanova. You just like, I, I don't know how I won the Apollo. At that time, I had to be trash. Like, and at, every time I replay it in my mind, they just went crazy. I don't know how to explain it to you. I, every time I came out, they was just like, <sighs> and I'm like, they couldn't hear the song. The song sucked, right? <laughs> and so uh, 20 years after Lean Back, the Apollo said, yo, Joe, pull up to the Apollo. Let's do uh, Family and uh, Fat Joe and Family. And, you know, everything I do, you know, we over-promote. I mean, we work harder than everybody. So it wasn't going to be about lean back. I didn't want to just celebrate me and Remy. I wanted to celebrate the fans and give them a show they never saw, like a real hip-hop Hamilton and Circus of Lay. Mm -hmm. So we had that joint moving almost a week. I don't think the DJ Test move ever had to really DJ. So every record he played, the artist was singing the record. Yeah, so if he right. played Mr. Cheeks, and he said, let me tell you about a girl there, or CL Smooth, or... The, the, the Locks, the Dipset, Little Kim, Mary J, um, Mello was out there. We had CL Smooth do Reminisce, um, MOP, uh, Peter Guns. We had Melly Mel, the OG, OG, OG. I mean, if I forgot somebody, I'm sorry, Ashanti was with us. Nature did ban from TV. So I brought the planet Earth, you know, and then we went outside because... To me, Harlem was, was really the thing in, in the 80s. So I had the whole block lined up with the old school wide body beamers and Benzes and mm -hmm. the Suzuki sidekicks. And it's a way, <laughs> I just wanted the whole nostalgia yeah. of like, yo, when, when, the, when the Apollo and uh, Harlem was really, really, you know, Harlem is like the, the Beverly Hills of black people. And so uh, I would say that's the ATL now, but at one point, I don't care where you was from, if you was black in America, you wanted to get to Harlem. And so people were free, people were stylish, people were fly. You know, Harlem is like the fashion plate. You know, a very uh, famous story is Tommy Hilfiger used to ride through Central Park, through Harlem, to get to his home in Westchester County. And that's how he came up with all them, the baggy shirts and the different colors, because he was studying the kids in Harlem, you know. You know, Harlem is the fashion uh, part of New York City. But for me, it was, uh, it was it, it, I'm still in the dream. You know, I'm, if it wasn't for these guys, I wouldn't have came out my house today. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, no, I'm dead serious. I wouldn't have came out my house. I'm just absorbing it. And all the right people hit me up and told me, yo, it was history. You made history. And that's what I wanted to do, give New York City one of the... The, the biggest moments in hip hop history, and I, I think we did it yesterday. It was, it was insane. And guys who didn't come, did, were on the text like Nas, Fifty, like even rumors of Drake. Like you know, people were like, "Yo, they pulling up." I was like, "Oh no, this can't. <laughs> this would be too crazy if they came through." You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so in the back of my mind, I know what I put together, the whole show. And I also knew, you know, I'm texting with Nas and 50 and them, and they like, yo, we really, I'm going to pull up. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'm in my back of my mind, I'm not telling nobody, but I'm like, yo, if these guys step up in here, it's going to go but crazy. But many men put up, boy, the many men were like crazy. <laughs> yeah, so it was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy, man. What do you Beautiful. think about New York's place in hip-hop right now relative to other cities compared to when you were coming up? Well, we the Mecca. You know what I'm saying? No, I wouldn't say still. I mean, the South got it. You know, there's no question ATL got it. And they have it in the Choco for yeah. like, You talk about a dynasty. Them boys been running it up. Legend, yeah. Right? right? But, you know, New York, I mean, yeah, we got all the kids with the drill rappers. 
We got A Boogie, you know. We got uh, Cardi B. We got um, Ice Spice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we got we got we got yeah. some hitters out here. Rest in peace, Pop Smoke. Pop, no, Pop Smoke was gonna be a super dude. Sure. Like that was a, for sure. That was that was sad for his family, but for hip hop, holy shit, he was gonna be a superstar. I'm talking about a superstar. Mm. You know, when when I heard his album, the, the records he was making was bigger than, you know, there's hits and then there's hits. Yeah. You know, and with the with that being said, let me just say. Uh, Migos, uh, my favorite rap group of this whole era. Uh, I think they'll go down in the Hall of Fame um, for this era of music. You know what I'm saying? Uh, these are guys that I really thought were, I really think are really, 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 really dope. So tell us about, is it Rewind, uh, rewind the Time or Rewind the Time? fight the time when you can rewind the time? There we go. <laughs> Why fight the time? When you can rewind the time. Yo, listen, marketing. why look 53 when you can look 40? Why look 43 when you can look 30? Right? Mm. So we came up with a product. And so if you, if, if you really study money, okay, if we're going into a money conversation, it's all the people who ever put out a product, no matter what the product was. If it was rock, if it was this, if it was that. It's always a product. You got to create your own product. And for me, you know, I have a real uh, problem with white hair. Like, so I've been getting white hair since I was 26, and I was using other products, and it wasn't really right. And so I, I teamed up with uh, It's a $10 billion company and said, y'all want to make a, a, a men's grooming for, uh, for men, you know, to, 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 to get them the beard coloring or the hair coloring. And they at first told me, they were like, you know, there's no money in that. And then she went and looked it up and said, yo, this brand is doing, the, the leading brand was doing $2.2 billion a year Dang. off of Amazon. She was like, yo, this is crazy. It's money. I said, let's go do it. So we got Travis Kelsey on the box, DJ Khaled on the box, Tyson Beckford, Tank Wonder Boy. All great beards. Yeah, all great beards. And so... And, and so I'm awesome. looking for Ricky Martin hey, right now or something. Beard, cause <laughs> Ricky Martin, I need a brown, a brown beard. You know, I'm looking for Ricky Martin. And so they all owners in the company. They all got skin in the game. It ain't just an ambassador thing. And we just changing the stigma. You awesome. know what I'm saying? Before, when you go buy some, uh, first of all, the guys on the box, the other box, they look like 70s porn star guys. <laughs> all right, let's be clear about this, right? Like, this is throwback yeah. porn. And so... We, we, we brought a fresh look 2024, but now you don't have to be ashamed. Now you can you get the DJ Khaled. You get, what's happening with Rewinded is something I anticipated, but the barbers, you know, barbers elect pre presidents. Mm -hmm. It's the barbershop talk that elects presidents in America. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So the barbers themselves are buying the Rewinded product. They, they, they trust in us. And they're using it on all their clients. And they posting it. And I'm just reposting what they authentically putting up. Yo, we used the Rewind. It was great. Yo, I used the DJ Khaled. Yo, I used the Tyson Beckford. It's amazing, man. It was an amazing response. And, and uh, selling through the roof. That's awesome. All right, guys. We're going to go through the pics of me scrolling. Where we go through the funniest tweets and pics of the week. Um, so we're going to see. Get us started. We're going to see what's got, what we got. Uh, oh, yeah, for y'all that don't know, JB got nominated for Teammate of the Year Award. I, I don't really understand. I, I want to know the criteria <laughs> of what goes into, like, the the finalists for the award. Because um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't look at JB like, oh, yeah, he's you're a good teammate. But... but. You know what I mean? I feel like Larry being on there is the least surprising thing of all time. Larry Nance for sure on there. Mr. McHale being up there, I see that. McHale? Yeah, TJ McConnell for sure. TJ McConnell. Love TJ McConnell. what qualifies you as the yeah, best Yeah, like that's what I'm trying to figure out. Jalen Williams, like, I, I've, seen, I've seen some videos, but like. <laughs> oh, because him know, hyping up like Shea? hyping up Shea, but like, 
you know. I would like to see Patrick Beverly on this list. Because I feel like he's, everyone says you hate playing against him, but you love when he's on your I feel, team. I feel like Pat Bev, Russell Westbrook, I feel like those are two guys that should be so teammates. So a great teammate? Year. I don't know. I, I've, for years I've they said he was selfish. You know, we, 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 with, with the, with the, can Russell will play with these people? From afar? Can, from afar? I would, I would love to, like, the seeing what he's done and everything, I would love to put a brush. Yeah. I, I, 100%. I, I, Still, to this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like as a teammate, like, it, there was one time, I think it was, he came in my, uh, he was in my draft, uh, Terrence Ferguson. He was like, mm-hmm. you know, he had a quick, quick cup of coffee in OKC uh, with Russ, but, um, uh, you know, the, he wasn't shooting the ball well. And Russ would go to the gym with him like after games or late late oh. night. So it's like having like a teammate like that. Yeah, like that. You know, you yeah, know, that's uh, Jason Kidd uh, once told me that uh, Eddie House right forced him to shoot threes. Mm. And see, he would take him after practice and every single day say, shoot 500 threes, shoot 500 threes, shoot 500 threes. And then after a while. Uh, Jason Kidd caught that. He caught that three. He caught mm-hmm. that bug. Yeah. You know, and so that's that's a real teammate that could see, uh, yeah. see see the diamond in you, and be like, "Yo, let's work on this." Wait, wait, so, so, so answer the question: Am I a better teammate? Better or roommate? teammate or roommate? <laughs> um, I'm a great roommate. I'll great say, roommate. Ah, uh, 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 this is tough. Um. Uh, well, are you guys too rich to be roommates? Or are they still they no, roommates in college? College, oh, college, 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 yeah. college. Um, <laughs> this, this this is a tough one. I'll probably say he'll pro- he'll probably a better roommate because I was never I, dirty. Yeah, you, you weren't dirty. You were just mostly just like in in your room. Um, teammate, he just. He always he has a terrible, terrible taste in music. He always wants to get the aux. Um, so you're Swifty, you're a, 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 what are <laughs> Yeah, he everything. That's what I, I'm he's everything. To say. I, I listen to everything. You like everything. Everything. Yeah, but it's like I'm, I'm, I'm still working my way into country. Besides that, though. I'm right. trying to get into country. Yeah, the country only genres. country artist I ever listened to is Jelly Roll. And J- <laughs> he's like a rapper to me. I, I listen to Jelly Roll. Yeah. But I try to listen to other country. I'm trying to like really get with the country music. Morgan you know, Wallen got some bangers. I tried, but uh, Jelly Roll is the Whitmore. one country guy I got listen to. Jelly Roll. Yeah. I'm almost there. Not yet. Almost there. Bro, you got. I'll put you on, bro. I listen and to I like some country. I, I like Taylor Swift. You just call me a bad too. teammate, bro. <laughs> I didn't say no. I just said you were a better roommate. Okay, all right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't say you were. I said you're a good teammate. See, I take accountability. My bad. My yeah, bad. there you go. Yesterday's what price is here? not today's price. Yeah, yeah. So this yeah. man is so rich, man. This DJ Callen, man, used to sleep on my floor. You talk about a roommate, man. This guy used to sleep on my floor. Explain, now he got yeah, the explain biggest these house you ever for, seen in your for life. For our listeners, explain. Um, well, he's explain my these daughter's picks. godfather. Uh, he's my best friend, um, Callen. I discovered him. You know, Fat Joe's the first to ever put out DJ Khaled as an artist. Mm-hmm. You know, first seven albums. Mm-hmm. Um, and now he's, uh, you know, I got to go to him for some loans, you know? <laughs> like, yo, Khaled, man, can you hold me down, man? And you know, because this guy's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. The way that he adapted the social media era is one of the <sighs> coolest things, too. Because yeah. obviously, from a music That's perspective, right, he he's got it. He understood what Snapchat? social media and Snapchat yeah. was. And ran with when he was music. live uh, chronicling, he was stuck on a jet Getting ski in the middle of Miami. Ski. Yeah. That, yeah, and you know what did it was that he was so charismatic that I remember the next day Justin Bieber went on an airplane and was like, they don't want me to win. Then yeah. once you got the big boys, yeah. the Drakes, the Justin yeah. Bieber's, you know, no mimicking you, oh, it's gone. Mm-hmm. It's, <laughs> it's tur- over. He can turn anything into a catchphrase. Yeah. Anything. He, and, and you know what? He's a beautiful person, man. He's a great family man. You know, he sincerely loves his kids and his wife. And, you know, there's not, nothing bad I can say about him as a friend. He's my brother. He's there all the time. If I call him right now, he's picking up. And so I love our um, dynamic, our re- relationship. Yeah. That's awesome. 
This is Josh's Funko Pop, or fake Funko Pop, because they're not making it because they wouldn't sell. But, oh. um, this, this, I'll say this one looks way better than yours. All I'm saying is that mine was this one for sure. Mine, so looks, mine looks way more realistic because you have a beard here. You don't have a beard, so let's right, start there. You got a goatee. Yeah, I got, yeah, you got a goatee. Go um, they got the headband, got the braids, and everything. Well, I was like my like. For, for some of you don't know, Josh made fun of my Funko Pop. Said it was uh. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> he said uh, it looked too realistic because. <laughs> The proportion of the head to body ratio. Oh, wow. Yeah. So uh, the, the head was it. Like you see how mine was. Like Jalen's was even worse. Like Jalen's like took up the whole package. <laughs> well, at least crazy. I actually have a package and it sells. Well, I actually thought right? that was. I haven't Javel seen. A, I haven't he... seen anyone tweet a photo. Of a, <laughs> you haven't seen anyone tweet a photo? Nope. With you saying that, there's gonna be yeah, photos tweeted. You're welcome. I'm helping you with. With with sales, yeah. Royalty. Let him let him talk. I, I might need some royalties. You in New York, Josh? <laughs> you get royalties? You in New York City? You keep playing good. Y'all win the championship and all that. You're gonna get yourself one of these things, man. Hey, man, help me keep get a Funko Pop. Hard, I'll help you get a Funko Pop. All right, man. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Skip this Bayless. Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless. Highlight reel. Wow. This is what I'll say. He must have averaged a lot of rebounds because he's following that jump shot. He's following. <laughs> he's following it. Like he's running after it before it's. Before it goes that. in, no misses. Yeah. Ah. But the thing oh, about he's that, cashing out. But I mean, like the thing about this is like, all right, like he made ten. How many did it? Like how like many hundred? Yeah, shots. exactly. Like, how many shots did yeah. he really yeah. shoot to get these? Hey, Amen. Well, he looked like he's he's shooting them. He's shooting it, man. He's getting there. He's, he's getting, getting there. there. I couldn't do that. That's valid. When, it, when we had Action Bronson on, he was he's like, first time I ever stepped on the floor at the Garden, I went eight for 14 from NBA 3. Oh, that's he what, said that's that. That's what he a said. Lot, I, yo, a lot of people don't understand, when you're shooting a three, or let's say you shoot an NBA 3 and like in a regular gym, right? Right? It's far. You shoot an NBA 3 on the, in the NBA court in the NBA arena, is different. Mm. Every time the fan comes out there at the end of the third for the for the shootout, he realizes <laughs> that shit. Yeah. Oh, he he airballs air air balls five. Air balls right. you, after you've been shooting for a minute, it's, it's, it's hard. Your arms are, yeah. are, are, are heavy. For you sure. know what I'm saying? It's, it's a far shot. It's man. not easy, but this girl, Caitlin Clark. Pulling oh, up from 30. She's got a chop. It's, it's a ratchet. It's, it's going unbelievable. In. Going to her tweet. left. Too. I saw a tweet. It was like, Whenever Kaylin Clark pulls up, it, it reminds me of 2016 Steph. You just think the ball's going in. If she misses, it's, yeah. it's surprising. It's surprising. Yeah. Very surprising. Yeah. And yeah, she bro. really is playing like Steph Curry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's now, crazy. Now, now, yeah. if she trained with like a sham guard or a, a ball handler, you if she gets this... Holy shit! She scored sixty a game. If she gets this, if she get she get that Euro step, yeah, bro. she get the this. Euro, the float game. She, if she get game. this. Help with the float game, bro. Like she, she got the shot. Game. If they teach her this, oh my god, yeah. we gonna like throw stuff at the TV. We gonna be like, it's gonna be out yeah. of this world. I wanna see her. She's like already see out of them. this world. Quick, you just, quick. Should she go to the big three? Yes or no? No. Get, if, if they got five million for her, I think she yeah, can do I'll great. Money, that's what I'm saying. Everybody's that's, that's, old that's, already. I mean, let's be bro. realistic. She'll tear them up. She She'll takes, tear them up. And games? she might beat Steph like they try to do my girl for the Liberty. Right? To real, shoot the, 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 yeah, she's good. But if they, they this year they bring Caitlin to get Steph for the three-point shot. You better be ready for that all-star weekend. Five mil for ten games? Oh, I'm for sure doing it. That's what, that's what I'm asking. That's yeah. what she yeah. like. Five mil for ten games. Performing. She should be taking it. Well, you know, Jalen Brown went over there and played some games at the Big Three hey, last year. Respect it. Yeah. You playing ball with the Facts. legends? <laughs> this the other night should have been an AM one. Oh. Oh, this, this, this. <laughs> oh, I didn't see this. <laughs> see, but they, 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 Joey Crack was showing my ass. <laughs> <laughs> the whole garden got blessed. <laughs> they saw the true meaning of Joey Crack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't see this because we was oh, yelling no, no, at the no, ref. Oh, no, 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 Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> ah! That's dope. Yo, now, all right, what's the question? Is there a question? No, no we're just no, reacting to it. Just reacting. 
I did not know that um, Colin had such an IQ for basketball. I was sitting next to him, and he was talking to his friend, and he was really talking. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, man, that was a foul. Look, this, that, nah, nah he should have got that. I'm like... This guy know the game. Like, the guy. Have, you seen, have you seen his highlights on like Twitter or anything? Yeah, I've seen small highlights. I'm saying he's he he's looks, gonna be he's a looks big boy. Yeah, <laughs> he looks he's six eight as a first grader. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's a big boy. He's a cute kid. But I was very surprised with his knowledge of the game. I was, he was commentating mm -hmm. the whole game, talking to his man. I was like ear hustling, like yo, this guy know the game. <laughs> Did you see this? I knew I was gonna get revenge. What? So wow. You, so so basically, last episode, do you, you want to tell the story of what happened? Because I had to catch it in the edit. <laughs> basically, yeah, I forgot. I forgot what happened. Uh, we were talking about Saquon Barkley going to to the Eagles, and then I knew they had uh, Travis Kelsey's brother on the team. Oh, they did before he retired. retired. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I forgot what his name was. So I said, I think I said some random. Matt. I think I said, I said Matt, and I kind of forgot what his name was. But I was just thinking like. It's a common white name, and oh. I said Matt, and then, and, and then I didn't like, hear. And then I looked up, I see him, <laughs> and then we just started laughing. And them so. two started dying. So anyway, I had to go online and Google <laughs> the most, the whitest names on the planet. And what do you know? No way. Josh pull, Josh shows up before Matt. Josh is a white boy then. Yeah, so. Josh, what's up, Matt? Matt, the, but Matt, they probably, it would probably be if it was black names, it would probably be reversed because it'd probably be more black Joshes. It's a black man, you know what I mean? That's what it is. He will use any opportunity given to take a shirt off. That's valid. Huh? That's I'm not valid. taking... I'm, no, it's... I don't, I don't take my shirt off. When do I take my shirt off? It's... There have been times. I don't... Maybe not now, because you're, you're growing up with kids. Probably music... I you're hate a father music, now. I hate music festivals. You're far... You're dead now. <laughs> you're dead now. I you can't do that. You hate music festivals? Yeah, I, I don't like crowds. Because they're long and I, they, I don't, don't like, like crowds. crowds. Like, Made in America was fun, though. Yeah, it was... Yeah, it was cool, but like... I'm the opposite. Yeah, like... I love, I, I I love music. It. Nah, I, I don't like... Like, if, I, if I'm, I'm going... I'm a concert like, goer. I love concerts. Like, if... if, you, like if and like, if I spend my money, I... Like, if I'm ever at a show and it's a boring show... Mm-hmm. I'll tell the crowd, yo, I got paid to ready, guys. Y'all better enjoy this. Y'all got about five more songs. Like, y'all just enjoy. Hope you got your money's work, because I'm the guy that gets thrown out at the Sade concert. <laughs> like, everybody's like, sit the f down, fat Joe. Sit down. Like, I'm yeah. mm -hmm. every second of it. The three of every us. Every show I go to, I'm singing every word. But you, you get, no. like, claustrophobic or something, right? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't like, or, like, if I'm in a crowd, I don't like being in a crowd. I don't, like, I feel like I'm looking, I'm on my P's and Q's. Like, I'm looking behind me. I got guys. friends I don't like, like Yeah, I don't like, yeah. I don't well, like people being behind me. Let me tell you something, over here in New York, you're loved, bro. They'll, nobody's going to do nothing right, to cool. you. I was going to say, the three of us were at Made in America, and this is when Josh was signed to Rock Nation when he first came out of college, mm -hmm. and it was, Jay-Z was performing. And he was doing his one set over here. We had pretty good seats or whatever. And then you got a tip text. from from Wes, right? You got a text. I, it might have been. But he basically said he's going to the, once this show's over, he's going to the like other a, like a stage. Like an unexpected mm -hmm. encore. So we so booked it. Booked front it. Row. Booked it we front sprinted. Row. Front row. Front row for both. It was hot. It was hot. Yeah. It was hot. But if you if you in like a little section where it's like, you know, He's bougie. 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 Yeah, he's bougie. Have you got white couches? Not, no not even that, but like, I, I just, I don't like this, ha like, just random people that I don't know that's just behind, like, you know what I mean? I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. I like being able to be in a controlled environment. <laughs> <laughs> that Joe looks like he's been banned from every riverboat in the city. Yeah, what, what was this? <laughs> what was this? Man, Jay Z set me up. Man, they had some uh, casino thing throwing back to the Roaring Twenties. I don't know, something like that. And I'm the only guy who showed up with the uniform. Uh, Everybody else yeah. was just like, however they was just. I'm like, yo, nobody got the memo. They was like, no, Joe, that's tomorrow. I came oh, the day early. I had my wife and some feather shit. So <laughs> we felt crazy out there, man. We, it, it was funny, man. It was, it was funny. I like that hat though. That's fire. That's smooth. I, no, I, I, you pull it fire. off. Not many people pull it off. Yeah. Look at the people cool. behind me. Nobody else got the costume. Yeah, they regular. Everybody else cool. is regular. 
So, my brother, we appreciate you man, coming on the podcast, time. Thank man. You. Thank y'all so much, man. Of course, this is awesome. Sure. Anytime. It was, it was a blessing, man. Uh, for, for everyone watching, make sure y'all uh, continue to tune in. I got episodes coming out weekly, man. Continue to come on this ride with us, and we appreciate y'all.